400 miles northwest of Australia, the Indian Ocean surges against the dangerous coastline of Christmas Island. one of the finest seabird islands in the world. Red-tailed tropic birds nest in holes in the cliff. And when they perform their courtship display, it even includes flying backwards. Its long, stabilizing tail seems a bit of a liability in a cramped nesting hole. Christmas Island's coastline was once living coral, which grew on the rim of a shattered volcano. Now it's fossilized into limestone, razor-edged and everywhere deeply undercut by incessant wave action. The shore terrace of the present day was once a fringing reef, now raised by the general uplifting of the entire island. About 6,000 pairs of brown boobies nest in small groups along this shore terrace. You can usually tell when a booby is worried. It attacks whatever lies closest to hand in an agony of frustration and conflict. Humans usually mean trouble here, because the Malays who live on the island like to eat boobies. But we could hardly expect the boobies to know that this was the harmless boot of a research worker's wife. and measuring the chicks is painless enough and does them no harm. But of course the parent bird is still worried and watches anxiously. Nelson and his wife looked at hundreds of pairs all round the island, collecting information about their breeding behaviour and feeding habits. An important clue to their feeding is the rate at which the chicks grow. By regular weighing, they found that Christmas Island booby chicks grow remarkably well. In other words, their food supply must be good. Even when trussed up for weighing, the chick stays full of fight. Christmas Island is more than 1,100 feet high and a dense covering of rainforest runs from shore to summit. Oceanic islands with forest are rare now, most of them having been cleared by man. So in world terms, this is something of great value. Far above the sea is a raised cliff, once the sea cliff, and this runs right round the island. boobies have followed it inland, so that some of them now nest far above the shore terrace, but you'll notice still on coral limestone. Noddies, dainty 
pesky little terns, but dusky grey instead of white, also nest on the inland cliff, though on other parts of the island they nest in the tops of palm trees. There are only two kinds of tree nesting boobies in the world, and Christmas Island has them both. Over 10,000 pairs of these red-footed boobies nest mainly on the shore terrace covered with rich jungle. Wouldn't you expect to see parrots and other forest birds in this green canopy? The marvel of Christmas Island is that here the terns, boobies, tropic birds, and perhaps most exciting of all, the frigate birds, occupy forest, which seems such a strange habitat for ocean dwellers. Frigate birds are spectacular anywhere, but here they are Andrews frigates, a species not found anywhere else in the world. Here is one of the world's rarest birds with a nine-foot wingspan. Outside the courtship season, the male's throat skin is just an unimpressive pink strip. But like all frigate birds, this will be changed at the breeding season. Then it expands into a bright red inflatable throat sac, which in the ordinary day-to-day -day activity like preening is hardly noticeable. Before the male displays, he blows this up into a scarlet balloon. And there he sits, scanning the sky for an overflying female. And then he trembles his great wings and clatters his beak in an ecstatic display. Eventually, this attracts her down and they form a pair. The female has no throat pouch and is partly white underneath, and she builds the nest from twigs which are mainly brought in by the male. It all looks rather difficult and frustrating work for a seabird, and the nest is always rather a flimsy affair. Once started, the nest must never be left unguarded, even for a moment, or marauders will steal the nest material. So the female stays at home while the male collects the twigs. Some males even fly around with half-inflated throat pouches. What a tremendous view you get over the forest canopy. The vast sweep of the shore terrace is given over to frigate birds and red-footed boobies. If seabirds must nest in trees, then this seems ideal for them. On the central plateau of this island, in trees that are festooned with lichens and ferns, nests another of the rarest seabirds in the world, Abbot's booby. This bird was for long a remote and mysterious creature, a relic species, seldom seen and never before filmed. Once it seemed safe and out of reach. Now things are changing fast.
Christmas Island has a problem. It is rich not only in its wildlife, but there are also millions of tons of fertilizers under those trees. And the rainforest, which took millions of years to develop, can be destroyed in days. That rich brown soil, which the bulldozer hardly notices, was built up fraction by fraction from the leaves of centuries of trees. That was nature's pace of progress, but this is ours. And because it would be costly to use them, the trees are treated simply as rubbish to be dumped. To think that in Britain, timber has doubled in price in one year that there's a world shortage of wood. And the pace is quickening here on Christmas Island. Now there is a landing strip where once it took a ship's crew a week to hack their way from the beach in Flying Fish Cove. A community of more than 3,000 people, Asians and Europeans, lives and works here. Now there is even an air link with Singapore and regular ships from Australia. Fish Cove is a thriving settlement, and yachts are frequent visitors. The island hums with activity, and the annual school sports festival is hugely enjoyed. Children's races are always fun, but now there is a new kind of race, a race against time. Now the real competition seems to be against the island itself, and it goes on every day.